Where it keeps me coming back. Keeps me coming back. Thanks for watching. Thanks for we'll see you in the next one. Now that's the that's the outro. Intro is hey there guys, it's Metro, and we are back. Today we are gonna do things. I remember I said something. What was it? Oh, we're gonna look for the items. Yes. Alright, well first things first, let's go ahead and do the dailies. Because we need the bronze. Uh, we'll queue up for those, and then while we do that, we will get up those pages where we have decided that we have items that we're pursuant of. Um, yeah, tr Temple Trainee's Blade, that's number one. That's number one, guys. Where does this freaking item drop? Literally drops from any item, any enemies in that Jade Forest area. Looks like it, so we'll just go around and kill mobs, I guess. Ooh, I haven't done this one in a long time. This has not been a dungeon we've done since the very beginning of this. Where we get stunned. Last time we did this, we actually got our ass kicked. I died twice in here. This, uh, these mobs that stun you are really brutal. But that was before we did. We had no health. Now we have health. Just don't have any DPS in the group. What is that rope doing? What? <laughs> okay. Anyway, all good. We're not here for that. The same Mythic Plus. He's 67, I guess. That's a big part of it. Who knows? I lost to a holy pally. Whoops. Done that more than once. The big problem with this dungeon, if somebody dies on the boss at any point, they're dead and they have to be battle res. It's quite annoying. That will never not be annoying, no matter what version of WoW we're playing. That guy's now dead. Is he doing a naked leveling challenge? That might be the case, actually. Really, the big mistakes here. Obviously, the whole bullshit with the community is one thing, but I mean, we don't even need to wait for this guy. Uh, big mistake here, letting low-level characters do heroics. I have no idea why they did that. I mean, I remember how messy it was on the PTR. I'm sure it was the same way with the first day. People were signing up to Heroics and just getting like one shot by everything. I mean, that's still happening right now, so. Happened just, just, just there. Iron Khan, where is he? He's in the raid. I love the Mogu stuff. I love this pal. Look at how gorgeous this is. Whoa. What the hell is that? Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm not thinking right now. <laughs> That's interesting. You see that? I never saw it before. That's really weird. I bet that nameplate's not supposed to be viewable. That's my bet. Here we can buff. Does it buff everybody when I buff? I don't know that. Magnetic field, oh no. That's, oh, that fell fucking toast. He is toast. Everybody's to See this fucking man. <laughs> okay, it's one of the worst dungeons. Because now these guys are dead for the rest of the fight. Leave 6k DPS fella down. He doesn't need to be here. He's pretty much dead before we pulled anyway. Oh, we have another battle res? Yeah, don't waste that on him. We have a holy pally, right? 
Well, he's oh, as Sky Ty would say, you can tell why that he's a worgen. Uh oh, flagrate. You know how that feels dead. See, we should noise the barrows. Got this spellable? Maybe it's AMSable. Ooh, that got kicked. I'll join him in solidarity. We got it. We interrupted it. That needs to be split, I think, right? Okay, yeah, that guy's dead again. That guy's gonna get conflagrated, but that doesn't mean anything to me. It means a goddamn nothing. Oh, now the healer's dead. That's right. Alright, fun. Rogue Dungeons. Either do them so fast that they're unrecognizable. Either do them so fast that it's unrecognizable, or you have this happening. They really should not allow low-level characters in here. It's so silly. No one is carrying me. What? Okay. Am I crazy? Like, is that not rude? I don't know. It's just like, it's on Blizzard, really. But it's just so stupid. Th this is now like the third time in the series somebody was like, These new tunes are garbage. Then why the fuck are you in here, bro? Like, how rude is that, dude? That is so rude to say, like, I suck at the game. Okay, then why don't you go do something to help you not suck before you waste other people's time with this shit? A, like, uh, they're talking about getting gear too. It's like, what are you talking about, bro? You can literally get the exact same item level gear anywhere in the video game. Just go do that. A world scripted exchange, but we are not fooled. Your clans are clearly in league with one another for the glory of our king. Is there more mobs up here? We will put you all yes, down. sir. Some skulks. He actually backpedaled this. We learned that earlier in the playthrough. Or got reminded of it. Need the dink, dink, the horn noise. We oh, got up to three K DPS. Definitely not being carried. Ten times less DPS than the other, the low, second lowest DPS.
Can we grip these guys? Yes. Good. Very good. Same thing as the previous trash. We accidentally stopped that somehow, I don't know how. It's gonna heal up. Doesn't seem to heal that much, I don't know who would heal, but I'll probably heal to the main guy. in a box or something right now back here. This is still happening. I don't know if this is something with an add-on that's causing this. Maybe it's some nerf. Aren't there supposed to be mobs here? Oh. Yes, there are supposed to be mobs here. And they are just invisible. Somehow. Not sure what the hell that was. Who died? <laughs> I'm that guy died. Well, it's a little bit more like a real dungeon now. Minus the fact that I can't ever die once. What's going on with those mobs? Did they just reset? What the fuck? That's possible? What the hell? That's bizarre. Never saw that before. So we have to clear those because that guy just died up there. That is really weird. I did not know mobs in dungeons could reset. That is news to me. I don't think that's normal. Maybe it has something to do with that door being not openable otherwise. Like, are we in the same? I never understood, like, is there actually a way to get here from the first area or is it not possible? This dungeon's layout is very unique.
That guy just really used Jesus Christ, man. Alright, sorry, buddy. We're going without you. I don't know, like, I don't know. I guess that maybe it's like they're doing them for the first time or something, but. Pretty sure if you die like 10 times in one heroic dungeon. I guess if you've just never seen what it looks like with the other bullshit going on, then maybe it's easy to be like, yeah, this is fine. This is normal. You're not carrying me. But once you see it done in three minutes, like yesterday, <laughs> like in the last episode. Then you might think differently. Come on. It's really weird. Alright, well, we got it done at least. I don't know that, uh, that might be the worst group we've had in a while. It's funny, because that was the first time we've done that tension in a while, too. So, uh, yeah. Couple firsts or a couple long times there. Uh, we will do the heroic scenario as well, and then we'll go farm in the Jade Forest. Well, yeah, then we'll buy stuff, then we'll farm in the Jade Forest. Wait, do we not? What happened? Why are we not done with the dungeon? What? Uh, what? We did not finish the dungeon quest somehow. Okay, well that's fine. We can do the normal dungeon too. Because that gives another greater bronze cache. That's strange though. This is going to be the whole episode at this rate. User long too. Not that long, but three minutes seems like a long time. All right, so rope scenario correctly taking that cue. Please don't be the boat one. What would be my best one? This one. This is probably the easiest one. Not my favorite one, but definitely the quickest and easiest one. I wonder if, like, you can literally just skip all this and just go right to the end boss. Probably not. But no reason that you can't try it, right? We might try it someday when we're doing it. I think we can do it alone, right? Does that have a buff or something? Oh, they're immune to damage, so that's a real big reason why you won't be able to do it. No matter how powerful you get, it's going to be hard to kill them if they are immune to damage. Looks like maps have zoomed in. In combat.
taste of what we're gonna look like when we solo it for real, I guess. Although this dungeon I don't think we'll be doing, but yeah. Void of me, level 66. There's so much good world content. And you do this. This is just sad. It just bothers me. Just always gonna bother me. I don't think it ever won't bother me. So we click on that, right? Or not. I guess that thing had to die first. The best thing these guys can do is stay out of combat and use the, uh... The item over and over again. I think you have to be out of combat for it. I don't think I've done this in the day in a while. <laughs> Obviously, you guys know me, Dunmoreau, at night. Something special. Frostmage is going to die to his own uh, spells. <laughs> okay. Let's quickly use this on this fella. Can you use it? Like, Yeah, I mean, I guess you can, but then it puts you in combat. Somebody else needs to use it. These folks are unaware of this fact. And can we just continue? We can, but I honestly think it'd probably be better to not. Well, what we can do is we can pull this stuff. Get a little bit of victory, uh, whatever that stuff's called. I get just taunt. You don't need to do that, my friend. Um, yeah, victory fire. Little Victini in here, we get a little Victini in here. Then uh, we'll continue onward. Now we can use the item on the main guy, which is nice. Oh, I fucking fucked it up. All right. Well, we'll wait, because that's... Maybe we just one-shot that guy. Somebody else did it too, I think. Hard to tell. This guy's been frozen solid. It is cold here, I can see why that happened. The king's champions have done it. The storm has ended. Why did we get a box from that? That's weird. To battle we march! You get a box from every stage or something? But you cannot stop the will uh, of Akama the Wise. You will die here. All of you. I don't even have the ability to lust because we're still on CD from the last dungeon. This doesn't really feel like it makes any sense with Mop, I have no idea. Herald of Rastakhan. I guess these fellas are here to try to get the other trolls to help them or something. Really just kind of weird plot. I don't understand why anybody would care about that. Like, you think these fucking level 5 Frostmane trolls care about what's going on on Pandaria? What would their reasoning be to care? He begins to heal himself, does he? See it. Must have got interrupted the second he started casting it. Okay. 
Well, that was quick enough. That's good. Now we have to do another dungeon, unfortunately. But it's fine, because we also will get dungeon finder normal. Oh. Ah. All right, well, I hate to do it, but we're going to queue for one dungeon and then leave. Or one boss and leave as soon as, as soon as we get the credit. Hate to do it, but yeah, that's Blizzard's fuck up. I don't know what the hell that is. How we killed three bosses and then only got credit for two. I guess the first boss must not count, maybe, because it's a weird boss. It's the only thing I can think of. <clears throat> Hate the player, not the game. In this case, opposite. <laughs> Tell which one is linked to it. If you don't know, if you attack the one that's linked to it, it does damage to it, like a lot of damage to it. Doesn't really matter. Let's move on. Last time we did this dungeon too, everybody killed themselves here, so we will take the luck out of it. That was in the very beginning as well. Do you have to actually clear the whole room out to spawn the boss? I don't remember. No. The answer is no. I can click. I don't know. I think I can click this as a tank as well, but got too close. Pound, pound. It's the frontal. Yeah, they hit him and they stack it, right? I don't remember. I don't remember why you hit him with the barrel. Does it make him do more damage? Does it make him do less damage? I think it removes the sack of the going bananas, which is not really needed for us. No, I don't know. Maybe it just does damage to him outright. I don't know. All right, we're good. Yes, yeah, sorry everybody, but that's all the time I got. All right, let's turn that in. Then we will go to what is the farm place? that we plan on doing. All right, let's scrap. Let's the buy stuff. What do we got? 6.4k. So I'm buy two of these. There's probably not a lot of the weapons left. Shaman and Warlock. And there's only one weapon set left. You find mastery in your passions. Pretty cool. The wonders of Going well. Yeah, so we have eight purchases left, and only one of them is 3k, but then we will be done. A couple days we'll be done with those. And then we'll be on to the cheap stuff. We'll be able to buy stuff a lot quicker. All right, so yeah, I don't have any formal plans here. Uh, maybe we'll go do those dailies because presumably I think you can get them from boxes too. It just simply says Jade Forest, right? Let's look at the actual Wowhead posts. I don't think it actually gave any advice though. It made it sound like it was gonna give advice. But as Wowhead is wont to do, 
they don't. It's just just kind of clickbait, unfortunately. It's, uh, oh, we definitely want to kill rares if we see a rare. Presumably, he has a guaranteed chance to drop an item. Quite what we're looking for. Did I reopen this? Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, a guide on it. I guess we can go around and look for the rares. If that one's up, maybe others are. It simply says. Nothing, because there's so many goddamn ads on the fucking thing. I have to scroll forever. Where are swords? Huh? Okay. Um... Wait, do I have the wrong one? Oh, I need both, okay. Temple Trainee's Blade. Yeah, this there's another one that I want to, right? Okay, it doesn't say shit, it just says Jade Force. So yeah, don't know, just kill mobs, I guess. Basically like we're doing in the Isle of Thunder, only with hopefully less competition. Jade Warrior Statue. Anyway, we gotta find a, um, a good spot for it. I don't really know of one. Never tried to actually kill mobs in here. Another rare though, we'll kill this fella. Guaranteed item, but no we'll drop. Well, we'll just start taking a look, I guess. Already got, <laughs> got a leech thread from one mob, cool. Looking like a lot of enemies here. Kinda. Just mow through them and loot. Fucking gorgeous zone, man. I'll tell you what. The cool part about farming, and this is why... Oh, this mom's still alive. That's why I like grinding in Classic, is you get to spend time in areas that aren't for quests, meaning places you've not really ever spent time before. Like, where even are we right now? We're by the... the, the mine, I guess, right? Yeah. That end up, probably would end up being the best spot, but man, I don't want to be in a mine. Jade Forest, come on, man, we got plenty of options that are picturesque. Alright, let's turn this off, too. We'll stop the rain. It didn't even change the skybox, all on top of the rain. Yeah, all right, TM Monastery is up here. Dawn Blossom's right here. What's this quest? Oh, it's probably for the scenario, because this is the scenario area. What wisdom do you see? Baltow Greenstone Brew. I'm working on my batch of famous volatile brew. It should be superb for countering rascals. Tell you what, how about you round up some of my friends and bring them back here to try around. First one's on the house. Oh, this, this is like an actual town. There's like a fucking inn and everything. Wow. Strange. Up here is the place where it goes sideways. Oh, you know what we can do? We can kill the Mogu. What about this guy? Is this guy dropping? This is like a rare hunter pet thing that can be tamed, but if you kill it, you, you get like a piece of... Like you get something that's like, oh my god, why'd you kill it? And you didn't get anything. Now it's a single thing. So that's pretty dumb. Alright, Mogu with his... Horse scout somewhere. Killing the more scouts. 
Okay. Get down. Drop a weapon. Oh, what did he get? Uh, we got a weapon, but not one we need. I don't know that this is like the appropriate way to do this either. It's literally any mob in the zone, I guess it kind of is, but. Heron through these Magu. And there's nothing else to really fight in the zone other than beasts and Mogu, right? Insolence. No fun doing this, honestly. Not super fun, not my favorite thing ever, but oh yeah, this area up here. Plus the rare, we kill the rare. This area up here has these spirits or whatever. Racers. Did I loot it already by accident? Yes. All right, let's see. Seems like a good place to go. <laughs> we should definitely do the dailies, though. No reason not to do them. And, uh... They will also give charms, which we can potentially use to get stuff. Should we hang on to the charms? Isn't yeah, we got 50. We should probably hang on to them just in case we do want to do the Dunford thing. Chicks made a video on that too. <laughs> I had no idea that I, I swear I did that a ton back in the day, but I don't ever remember getting to the actual end of it. Not particularly fun, but I think once you're really, really fast, it's probably. I guess the trick is to just not labor in the middle. Like, I don't know, it felt like to me, the goal was to loot every single box, but that's just physically not possible, right? So you have to try to go for the highest value ones and move on. And then at the end, there's a lot of, and I didn't notice, I have to watch it again maybe, but I didn't notice if the guy uh, when killed gave like a bunch of threads or something, he probably did find the boss kind of guy. All right, uh, yeah, let's go do the dailies. A daily from the dragon, okay. House of Dragon, season two. Coming up. 
What else is there? Another dragon daily over here or something. I don't know, it's just this fella. Greetings. Three, that's all you get. I swear there was more than that. Oh, this is probably a good place to farm, huh? Presumably count as Jade Forest. For some reason, we're now in combat. They don't seem to drop much, but maybe they also can drop it. I don't even have to attack stuff anymore, man. It's crazy. These guys are dropping threads, so I assume they can drop gear too. And there are many of them. It's a box. Stash of gems. Oh, it's like just a mob shit. I thought it was actually going to be remix specific gems that they added for this. That would have been cool. Fucking mobs are really, they just walk into me and die. It's like I'm radiating damage. Have we even gotten gear while we were up here? No. Mobs in there. Good, very good, but yeah, we're not getting any gear, so. Uh, I don't know that that's uncommon. Like, maybe we're just not necessarily getting lucky. I think there's other spots. More actual red mobs. It feels like you're not going to get loot from these mobs, but the fact that they dropped threads made me think that you would. And again, we're stuck in combat with what? What could we possibly be in combat with? Everything's dead. I uh, always sky away with the mechanic. Which I think is what we will do. Uh, which direction do we have to go to turn these in this way? Oh. Forget it. Oh, that uh, like bounced off it. That's lucky. 
Land on that? Okay, perfect. Still in combat, though. So less than perfect. Uh, what? How, I mean, this is a bug, right? How could we possibly still be in combat? I can't even die because I have no fall damage on gem wise. Can you take that off while in combat? Maybe. All right, well, this is not a problem, but it's definitely not ideal. You are most welcome. Keep your eyes and heart open. The world is your future. Spirits bless your path. Presumably, this is going to give us loot that is qualified to be the item we're looking for, right? Yeah. But we're still in combat, so we got to just keep walking away. I don't know how we're going to eventually get out of combat. And the episode may end and we may still be in combat. Out of the zone. Now I know there's a rare close. Ferdinand. 1200 days ago. Okay. That's a while. Probably some like random pet got pulled. I've had that happen in this area before. Not necessarily happened in this area, but it's gotta happen somewhere, huh? Wait, why is the rare? Usually the rare was like right next to the door. That's not his location, I don't think. It's maybe a spot that he could be though. Well, we're hoofing it, I guess, stuck on the ground. Not the uh, end of the world in Remix, but definitely not great. Right, so it's gonna ha I mean, it, we're gonna have to like do something about this, I think, because I definitely... I don't plan on killing one mob at a time for the rest of the playthrough. That'd be a good spot. I gotta like look up. I mean, I guess, I guess we're just stuck going in the mine. We're here, we're close anyway, aren't we? Mine it is. We're stuck in combat anyway, so. But you see, like, I literally did not know this was a village. That's what... Speed and haste and, uh, you know, flying as well, honestly. That's what that does to the game. This is a place that you come to quest every time. I probably missed, like, a quest that tells you about the village. And I definitely missed any actual flavor of the village. The game has so much that you could explore and enjoy, but so few people do it. And that's why I said that's why I like grinding because it allows you to go to places where you would never imagine being before. Non-objective based areas. Should be plenty of enemies down here though at least. Right? Where's the enemies? Somebody down here maybe killing them. I mean I guess these guys count. Oh, we just got a green, so they count.
So I've only just recently found out that there are still like seemingly a lot of unopened Pokemon boxes, like hard boxes. Like ones that you would have purchased as a TCG retailer. And then sell you sell the booster packs. There are apparently a lot of them out there. I'm really, really shocked. When I heard that people were doing like openings, I figured it would be like, alright, we found one pack. I could open it, you know what I mean? I'm really shocked that 22 year old cards are still somehow they haven't been opened. I guess like a lot of people didn't mean to keep them. I've seen a lot of people suggest that they like accidentally kept boxes that had stuff in that. And now those are being sold for like enormous value. Which honestly I don't know that I would do. I, I was like, looking into it like I think like legitimately there's a very good I, I wanna hear what other like I, I started leaving comments. Oh we're out of combat. I wanted to leave comments on like YouTubers who are doing it and see if any of them actually reply. Most likely not, because if they're spending fifteen thousand dollars on a card box, they're probably not reading the comments. But I found one guy who's not very big and he's still spending an enormous amounts of money on it. But anyway, I wanna know what the reality is of making your money back. Because I, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting premise. If I managed to sell all the Pokemon cards I have and had, say, $10,000 from that somehow, I don't know that that would happen, but say it happened. Could I use that to then buy a unopened box? It seems like I wouldn't even consider it on anything other than first edition, though. Unless it was, like, half the price. Um, because first edition cards sell. Like, I've been able to sell a lot of cards already. I've sold six cards already in less than a month. And they are not, like, value... Like, they are low-value cards. Like, the highest one was the Porygon at $15. Um, so... Will it be valuable to simply put $10,000 into a card box and, and make that money back, maybe? Now, I think what needs to happen for that to be the case is you need to get at least... Like, you need to get as many hollows as possible. I, I think there's, like, a limit. Because people keep talking about it on these card openings that there's an error box that gives more hollows. But otherwise, it's only going to... I think it's only going to give eight. Uh, but either way, I, I think you need, like, every single card to be graded. <laughs> which is a little expensive. Um... And then you need to sell. Like, it definitely, if, if there was a world where every single card could sell, you would make your money back, obviously, no matter what. Because you're going to get, I, I don't know how many, I think it's 48 packs per box. Or maybe it's 36, I don't know. But either way, you're going to get hundreds of cards. So even if every non-rare card sold for only $2, which should be, that should be normal. That should be easy with first edition cards from the, like, the vintage, vintage era. That would be, I think you get guaranteed one rare and then maybe uh, uncommon as well. I'm not really sure how that part works. But let's just say you get uh, nine cards. And if there's 48, nine times 48, 432 cards that are not like super valuable times two. So that's already almost, uh, yeah, it's $860 already. So it's almost $1,000 just from the regular shit. And then you have another potentially, I think it's 48. I don't know that's the number, but either way, um, it might be 36. But either way, uh, yeah, you got at least another, just say 30 some cards that are all really valuable. Like guaranteed to be valuable if you buy a first edition box. And um, like those ones like sell every single day somebody buys one of these basically which is kind of crazy yeah, this guy's down there now anyway we're out of combat we can go back up we did get two greens down here but no weapons this may not be possible i guess i overestimated how much uh how much loot would actually drop so outside of content that gives boxes i don't know I think turning these in gives boxes, doesn't it? So let's just go do that instead of saving it for keys. Because I want this sword more than anything right now. It's the rare there. I guess he can be at any of these trees, you know? 
But anyway, yeah, it seems like it would actually be a good investment. If I think you need to get PSA 10s though. But anyway, I was looking, like the base set boxes are totally out. Like twenty five thousand dollars, I can't even dream of having that much money to spend on that. Um, so that's totally out. But like I think like the jungle boxes would be like I think they're like less than fifteen k for a first edition box. That I mean that's yeah. Could scrap that money together if I can guarantee I make it back. And then I mean I think I think the point of it is making even more back if you get lucky. I think there's a good chance that you make it back. Yeah, okay, so we did get a, a weapon that was potentially something we might want for transmog there. So perhaps the right strategy now is to just go and do dailies in the zones that we want these things from. Um, and is there one other that we definitely wanted? Tian Monastery Sword. Which is from Veil. Vale. Alright, yeah, so let's go do the Veil vale dailies. And then that'll be the end of this episode. Here we can just hearth. It's an interesting premise. It's probably a fantasy, total fantasy. But like, I watched this guy do this, and he—I don't know, like, you know, he—I—I—I I, I, I guess this part I don't fully understand. But like, if the card is literally not ever been physically touched by a human being's hand how is it not a psa 10 and so apparently the answer to that is because it is not perfectly made so it's like literally the pokemon company that fucks you on the value of the card do these still give boxes i don't think so oh yeah they do wow that's august celestial still but anyway, um, so like, yeah, so theoretically, if you got eight hollows per box and only four of them were PSA 10s, would that be enough to make your money back? Or is that even a good ratio? Is that absurd to say that? That's probably not a good ratio. But I, it's like, I feel like you, like, PSA 9 is still a good card, no? It's just like so much less... And honestly, dude, I don't think I want to try to sell, like, $5,000 cards. Like, I, I have anxiety about selling these cards that I have currently. It's been really comfortable just doing the um, the sub-$20 cards because I just throw them in an envelope and send them out. It's been a really, actually, it feels really good. I would sell $20 cards for the rest of my life if I could. But obviously, I have, I'm waiting for these cards to be graded. There's been no updates since. It's been almost a month now. I haven't actually paid for it yet either, I guess. That's still waiting for that money to be taken out. It's going to be a lot. It's supposed to be like $700, so. It's a big chunk. That's what I'm saying. Like, if, you know, you're already going to spend that kind of money on greeting. Why? I, and now that I'm looking at these other people. So, like, this guy is, like, he's looking at these cards and he's trying to predict the grading. And I think when he made the video, um, I think he expected it to be... I don't know. I'm really shocked by the way he's describing it. Like, he's very, 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 very under on all of his grades, his predictions. And when I talked to Jix about it, and, and also in the own research I did, like, it seems like it's very easy to get a 7. As long as the card's not in super bad shape. It's harder to get 8, and then very hard to get 9 if the card has been played at all. And if the card is fresh out of the pack, it's like guaranteed a 9. And it has a chance at a 10. And the 10 is just based on the company that made the card. Most welcome. And that's that was my research. But now that this guy who is literally opening these $20,000 card packs and then sending them in for grading, is like, yeah, this is probably going to be a 7. And it's like, the and the what? Why would it be a 7? It's never even been touched. How could it possibly be a 7? That doesn't even make sense. Like, what the fuck does a 10 look like then? What do you have to have a 10? But And then he's he ends up being wrong on a lot of them too. So it's like way wrong. Like He's like, this will probably be a 7 and it comes back a 9. It's like, so it makes me wonder. I don't know what the reality is there, but I'm like all of a sudden deep into this. It's like a new hobby of mine, even though I'm fucking broke and can't even afford to play golf alone, buy $20,000 card boxes. 
There's some, uh, there's some mirage there that I would like to not see dispelled. Let's put it that way. It's like a fantastical thing to think about. Like, wow, these items that were something I, I mean, like, it's almost like kind of makes me emotional just even thinking about it. Like, the cards that I own, I do not care if they ever get sold or not. I will keep them happily. Um, obviously, the expensive ones, I hope that they will. But, like, the rest of them, if I keep that stack of Pokemon cards behind me for the rest of my days, I'll be happy with that. Uh, and then I guess obviously the prices will theoretically go up year after year maybe, but um, it's just like I don't really care that much about owning them. What like, I, my mom's like, "Why are you gonna sell them? That's your childhood." And I was like, "No, it's not. <laughs> like, that's you know what I mean. I don't remember even playing with them. Like, I I know I own them, and I know my mom bought a ton of them for me, but um, I don't I don't know anything about it. Like, I don't feel like it's part of my childhood, honestly." I said this the other day, but the only memory I actually have of Pokemon cards in general, uh, besides, like, I remember going to the Mewtwo movie, or whatever that movie, I don't even remember what that movie is, but it has something to do with Mewtwo, and they go to, like, an island or something like that, and getting, like, the promotional cards or whatever they gave. Um, but anyway, um, I, the only Pokemon card memory I have is this fucking guy who he just like absolutely hated me i had no idea that he hated me like it took me a very long time to realize this this was like my first interaction with somebody that i didn't realize i had bothered for so long but anyway yeah he like basically hated me and he was like i'll trade you uh whatever you blah 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 for a lugia i was like oh uh sure yeah that's good trade <laughs> it was like some easy card trade you know and, uh, and then he basically just took like a common and then spit on it and put it in my hand. So I grabbed his spit like a loogie, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, that's literally the only memory I have of Pokemon cards. We must not falter. I don't have any other memories. I don't remember playing them. I barely remember collecting them. Like I cannot remember opening a pack. I have no idea where I got a first edition Blastoise. Like I have no idea where I got these things from. I have no idea where I got Japanese Pokemon cards from. Like those, I, I don't believe those are mine. I really don't. I have another, the only other memory I have is my friend Tony. He, when I was very young, like we were very, like we were best friends kind of thing. And uh, I remember him, 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 his mother and his father getting divorced. And the father was like trying to keep the son and, you know, on his side kind of thing. So he would literally just buy him whatever he wanted. Like, literally, like, spend every dollar he owned just to try to influence the son. I think that was the goal, at least. I have no idea why he did that. He just, like, spoiling his son or something. I have no idea. But anyway, this kid had, like, everything. Like, every game, every console, like, every everything that you could ever want as a kid. Which was cool, but he didn't really enjoy it. I don't feel like, because he'd constantly just, like, he'd be like, nah, I don't even want this. You can have it. He would just give stuff away to people. I think he recognized what was happening. But anyway, um, so yeah, he uh, he had all these, I remember him giving me a giant binder with, with cards in it, and I think it was Pokemon cards. I thought it was Magic the Gathering cards, but when I was looking at my Magic the Gathering cards, I don't, like, I don't feel like I have anything that wouldn't be mine. I remember buying a ton of the Mercadian Mask sets and then onward. Uh, as I even own the book. I don't know where it's gone though. I've lost all the shit in my fucking house after we moved everything, but it's somewhere um, Francis LeBron that's the guy's name who wrote it I think <laughs> which always sticks out in my head, but anyway um, Yeah, so it's like I'm looking through the magic the Gathering cards. I'm like do I have anything rare? It makes me think that like, you know, the father was probably not a complete idiot like if he did buy his son something crazy he would probably not allow him to just give it away but yeah i don't know because like i think the original like super rare magic the gathering cards were not they were uh that was like 95 i think like what let me look i think it was 95 right when did mtg alpha launch 93 okay so i was four years old so obviously i don't have any cards from then uh we don't have enough mobs over here i guess but pokemon 99 and 2000 that's yeah right up there that's crazy though man because i don't like that was a long time ago that was 
it couldn't have come out. I couldn't have bought them when they first came out. When did, uh, let's see, when did Pokemon Red launch in US? September 28th, 1998, okay. That is hard to believe. I feel like I was older than that. So I was not even 10. But this was, I've told the story a million times over the years, but yeah. This was, the kid, his father bought him the game the day it came out on US. I don't, I'm not even sure how, how, how easy that was to do, but either way, that's what he did. And, uh, and we were all talking about playing it. And we were pretending that we were Pokemon trainers by throwing, like, footballs at each other and shit to try to catch each other. It's lame as shit, but it was funny. Uh, and then all, everybody else got it for Christmas. Like, that was, like, the big gift for Christmas that year. And I don't know if that was because it was impossible to get your hands on it when it first came out. Because, like, yeah, now we know Nintendo's got a bit of a penchant for that. So I wouldn't be surprised if that started early on in the life cycle of this company but um anyway yeah i remember not getting those games until christmas so presume so it sounds like what would have happened here is then um the game would come out in 98 2098 or uh december 98 and then the following year would have been the year we started collecting the pokemon cards so that would have meant that I mean, it makes total sense, too. That would be less than a year. Like, when did... Let's see. When did Pokemon TCG base set launch US? Oh, it's not even... A, dude, it's a couple months. January 9th, 1999. But I doubt I was, like, a fucking bleeding-edge Pokemon collector at that age, so... I probably wasn't among the first people to buy them ever. Wow, that's crazy, dude. This shit came out in Japan three and a half, almost, well, yeah. Not, not, it's like two and a half years. Two and a half years earlier. That's kind of wild. All right, we're gonna finish this daily and then that is that. Where's this mob at? Oh, there's a rare, we'll go kill the rare. Double crossbow? Why are you shooting with two crossbows? Takes too long to reload, bro. I mean, this would probably be a decent place to farm. Oh, we got a item. Not one that I wanted to get, but that's cool. I mean, I'm gonna die to this, I think. Oh yeah, we have bandages. This is just a percentage of your health, so it's quite nice. When did jungle, like, let's see, when did, uh, when, when did Pokemon TCG Team Rocket set launch US? 2000, April 2000. Okay, so that's like the upper limit. That's, that's the latest. I have a couple Neo Genesis cards, which I have no idea why. That was probably, I think, like, my mom's memory of it is obviously way clearer, but she, uh, said that, um, she was like, it was just one of those things, like, I, I took you to the grocery store, and at the counter, they'd have Pokemon packs, so you just buy a pack at the, at the counter every day, you know, every time we'd go. Now, that is not my memory of it. I think that she might be thinking of it, like, later, you know, like, as I was getting older, it was, like, just something to sat satiate me kind of thing, you know? But I definitely remember buying the packs, like, fervently. Oh, we got, what is that, legs, boots? Okay. Still getting gear that we don't actually have, which is nice. Obviously, this, uh, this dungeon, or this zone, we haven't spent a lot of time in, so there's probably a lot of loot that we actually can get from here. I definitely remember, I know I've, then when I started actually, like, Magic the Gathering, the stuff that I bought was, like, way later. Oh, yeah. Um, and then that, that was probably when I was, like, 15 or something like that. 14 or 15. Those I remember buying, like, actively. Like, going out of my way to buy them. Like, I have a very strong memory that was some... I don't even remember why. 
But there was some event in the middle of the town I live near, not the one I actually live in. And they had a bunch of Pokemon cards, a bunch of stuff being sold, like, card-wise. And I remember going in there and, uh... And buying a bunch of Magic the Gathering cards. Wait, did we not click it? You have to actually, like... You can't just walk up to it. You have to sit there and loot it. So these give stuff. Relic of Gulai's is a rep that we don't need. Relic of the Thunder King, huh? Well, that gives a lot of rep. I mean, how many of these do we have? We got a bunch of these. Fortunately, they're probably useless because people are saying you cannot send items. Doesn't give anything other than that and a charm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Were they giving boxes too? Oh, shit. That's actually cool. All right, well, we should be doing this every day then. We've gotten already multiple items. You've completed the set. That ain't it. That is it. Okay, well, we just finished a set, I guess. That's interesting. Um, how did I get those? Just from killing mobs down here? I think at one point I did, like, do a bit of farming down here. There's just not enough enemies to farm. It's probably, they probably just drop from any enemies in the zone, right? <laughs> 2000 is when I remember Pokemon being, because I remember 2000 very well, because that was obviously when I was young, like, understanding the concept of the year 2000 versus 99 was like much different experience. I remember people freaking out about Y2K and shit like that. I remember being at my grandma's during that and thinking like we're all gonna fucking die. Like, you know, some crazy shit was gonna happen. I've always been like uh, kind of scared of this. I remember even in 2012 when that happened, same thing. It was really, uh, I had a lot of anxiety around that. But anyway, I definitely remember. There's a rare? What is it? I don't know, it's just a pool that's blue, so it looks like it's got a ring around the rare icon. But I definitely, yeah, 2000, I was in fifth grade. Joseph Barbetti, I was <laughs> the teacher. I remember, uh. See, I think at that point. I guess I would have been in fourth grade when it first came out, yeah. Carmine Labrudo. Um, but yeah. I definitely remember fourth and fifth grade pretty well, but I don't remember the actual timeline of Pokemon. Anything that predates WoW is hard for me, man. For years, I have like literally been like, all right, uh, when did this happen? Okay, I remember based on the expansion that was out. Because I have these, like, memories that are, like, pillar memories that are, like, they're all based on these events that would have happened inside the game. And then I could, like, rationalize, like, where I was. What's that? I could rationalize, like, what my headspace was and what my, you know, behaviors would have been like at that time because of what was going on in the game. Which is kind of sad, maybe, maybe sad to say out loud, but it is true. And uh, that's how I've always remembered stuff. So like, like I have an awful memory if you guys aren't aware of this. I basically have like a fucking photographic memory and then I have nothing else. Like I can't, I could remember sitting in, in the fifth grade class that I just described and making a, um, like we were supposed to do like some art thing. I don't even remember what it was. But I remember I just drew the Pokemon logo and everybody in the class called me like idiots. Like they were like, oh my God, that's so lame. Cause it was supposed to be like actual art and I just 
drew the Pokemon logo, which I, was actually really fucking hard to do at the time. I'll re I remember this very distinctly. This shit was not easy to draw. Here, let me show you what it looks like if you've never... Pokemon logo. Look at this. So I did this with the symbols sideways, like these are sideways and they're all right on top of each other and there's the E and the letters and all this. That's not easy to draw when you're 14 years old. So I think I did a great job. Fuck those guys. But yeah, they were, uh, I remember getting made fun of like heavily. I like remember the feeling of it. I remember the teacher's reaction. Like even he was, thought it was stupid. <laughs> he's like, you're supposed to draw Look, he's like, I think he said, like, look around you. Everybody else drew a ship or something. I think it was something to do with, like, the holidays. Or something. I don't remember why we were doing it, but basically it was like I did not do what I was supposed to do. And, uh, <laughs> and everybody made that aware, made me aware of that. Oh, yeah, there's those keys again. I guess we just got the four just from the time spent in the zone. But, yeah, I think that's a good for the episode. Let's go ahead and turn this in. Greetings, wanderer. Speak. Shall have another one of those, yep. Yeah. We actually have two of those. We are the the right, because we opened so many boxes down there. Is that it? We turn them all in? Yep. Alright, cool. Open boxes. Nothing that we needed. Scrap them things. But we did get some transmogs that I didn't know I needed. I mean, that, too. I mean, we did get something, but... Definitely gonna have to start doing these every day. But we're just sitting here and farming this zone, because there seems like there's a lot of stuff, regardless, even if it's not stuff we necessarily want. Oh, another Pokemon card sold. Jesus. Alright, they're flying off the shelves. Print that label out too before I go. The bead drill. What did we? What did it sell for this time? Last time I put it up for two dollars, it sold like the day I put it up, and now I put it up for two fifty, and it sold the, within twenty four hours again. So I have one left. Maybe I should charge more. I don't like the idea of like like you go to these websites. And it shows you the price on what they're going for. This is too many. There's too many bee drills. Bee drill. Base. Or is it jungle? Yeah, so it says it's going for 249. I just sold it for 250. So I'm like, all right. I don't know that I want to like gouge people. But maybe there's a reason that it's selling so quick and I don't know what that reason is. So I'm like just throwing money away by not selling it for more? I don't know. I'm like brand new to this and I am really shocked at how active it is. Like that, these, like it literally says it right there. You see this? Why does this do this? One sale per day, 249. Like what the fuck are you talking about? This is not even a valuable card. Who's buying these this often? I have no idea. People are saying that there's people out there trying to like complete full set collections, but there can't be that many people trying to do that, is there? That there's a, a card selling every single day for 250. Is it just the same people buying them and then reselling them or something? Like I don't know. All right. Anyway, uh, we come up short of 5k. But yeah, let's go buy one more item. What is this? Why is this on the screen? But yeah, I, I think that was a productive day. Um, we got a lot done. We got a lot of buy, uh, stuff purchased. Up to, uh, oh, we've crested over 25k stamina. Oh, this is the wrong city. Can we kill this? I mean, yeah, they're actually very easy to kill. But I do not want to get stuck in a PvP match with people. I did not come here for this. I'm going to be second combat, aren't I? That's a habit. I'm surprised I haven't made that mistake before. Oh, he knocked me down. Stop, stop the spell. 
Can I jump over? I don't even think he can now. Okay, a bit of an issue here. Here, we'll meteor. That's the best we're gonna do. Oh, we're still in fucking combat. Not again. Okay, good. I'm surprised I haven't done that more frequently. It's usually because I'd spend time in the zone and then immediately go back to the city, but I haven't done that a lot this playthrough. This zone has not had much content for us simply because the Golden Lotus rep was done before we even finished leveling, I think, just like the Shadow Pan stuff. Alright, uh, yes, buy class it apparel. I'll just buy a 4k one just to spend a little bit of money. Aldrachi? I mean, it doesn't matter. We're buying them all, so let's just... Actually, I want to buy the Warrior one, because that one's the one I definitely want the most. Just in case. I'm thinking, like, maybe someday, for some reason, I'll stop doing this, but those are the ones that I want the most. All right, cool. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. If you have any comments on any of this stuff, especially the Pokemon stuff, I'm very eager to talk about that. But yeah, thanks for watching. We will see you guys in the next one.